Guess what, folks? Free speech in Canada is under attack. I know. What else is new? Today, we're going to be talking about the case of Jordan Peterson versus the College of Psychologists of Ontario. Today may be a slightly shorter episode than usual. I was hoping that my usual partner in crime, Mr. Valiant, would be here to join me and disentangle some of the legal niceties of this case. Unfortunately, James's internet is down for the moment, so I'm going to be going solo. However, I have read the actual decision in this case. It's an 18-page decision, which was released last week, and it's actually very clear, very easy to read, and uh, maybe we'll put the link in the description below in case anybody wants to follow up. And I'll just mention one more interesting resource for people who want to do a little more research on this topic. There's an organization called the Canadian Constitution Foundation. They are a legal charity, uh, actual lawyers and legal scholars who take on support various cases having to do with civil liberties, freedom of speech, uh, and they've done a they were actual interveners in the, this particular Peterson case, and they've done a series of videos. So if you're interested in learning more, check out their YouTube channel. And if you live in Canada, consider supporting the work they do, because they do a lot of very, very important work. So for those of you who have not been following this case, and in fact, I just learned about this last week, let me give you a little bit of basic background. Jordan Peterson has been a clinical psychologist since 1999. So at that time, he became a, a member of the College of Psychologists of Ontario, which is the regulating body of this profession in the province of Ontario. Peterson gave up his practice in 2017 after he was thrust into the public spotlight, you know, the fallout over Bill C-16 and, and other areas where he's become very... Uh, a very colorful public figure, but at the same time, but he still maintained his membership with the college and he still publicly identifies as a clinical psychologist in podcast interviews and in his social media. That's an important point that we'll be returning to later on. Over the past few years, the College of Psychologists have been, have, has been receiving complaints about some of Peterson's public statements that he's made on social media and on various interviews. And back in 2020, the college brought some of these complaints to Peterson's attention and asked him to be a little bit more cautious about the language he uses and about not making inflammatory statements, but they didn't pursue the matter any further. So last year, in, in 2022, having received some more complaints, and I'll give you some examples of these complaints later on, the college decided to conduct a review of these complaints, and they finally reached a, a conclusion. And so this decision by the College of Psychologists of Ontario was released last November, November of 2022. They concluded that Dr. Peterson had made statements which are demeaning and degrading and unprofessional. And so they ordered him to undergo a SCERP, SCERP, S-C-E-R-P. That means a Specified Continuing Education and Remedial Program. If you've ever seen the South Park episode, Death, Park of, uh, Death Camp of Tolerance, it's something a little bit like that. It's, so it's basically a reprogramming, re-education program, which, so in order for Peterson to keep his license with the, with the college, he has to undergo this remedial program, this re-education program at his own expense and to the satisfaction of the coach or coaches who would be working with him in this program. So that's the basic background. At the time, so this decision was released by the college last November. Uh, Dr. Peterson at the time said that he would refuse to participate in such a program. As we'll see later on, he's actually changed his tune on that, but he refused to participate. And so he took the college to court. Uh, and so the case was brought to the Ontario Divisional Court earlier this summer. And the decision that I referred to was just released last week, last uh, Wednesday, I believe it was. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the decision, a little bit of the implications of the decision. But first of all, there's a little bit of necessary context, a little bit of necessary legal background. Uh, so these were some of the questions that I was going to ask James. But fortunately, some of the videos of, of the Canadian Constitution Foundation answered these questions, I think, very, very clearly and very uh, succinctly. The first question we have to ask is, what is the nature of the College of Psychologists of Ontario? Is this a, a governmental or quasi-governmental body? And that's important because we have to analyze, is this really a, an issue of censorship? Are they actually trying to censor Jordan Peterson's freedom of speech? 
consider this. If I were to work for a private company, say a private college or a private school, I make public statements that are inflammatory or controversial or unpopular. If they were to fire me or dismiss me or somehow discipline me, that would not be censorship because private individuals, private organizations in a free society can choose whom they deal with and whom they don't deal with. And on this channel, we've had many discussions about how this applies in the case of social media companies, et cetera. So the question here is, what exactly is the nature of the College of Psychologists of Ontario? So this is an, a, an example of a regulatory college. A regulatory college is an institution that's created by an act of parliament, either federal or provincial. Because this is the College of Ontario, I'm assuming it was it created by an act of provincial legislation. And so the power that this organization wields over its members is legislative power, i.e. its legal power. So for that reason, I think we have to conclude that this really is a, a potential case of censorship, a potential case of government oversight, government limitation of Dr. Peterson's freedom of speech. That's the first question we have to answer. Now, after this decision was released, Jordan Peterson made a, a podcast appearance with his daughter, Michaela, where uh, approximately 30, 35 minutes long, where they talked about the decision, they talked about the implications of the decision. If you're, if you're interested in this case, I strongly suggest that you read the decision first and then watch Jordan Peterson's discussion of the decision with Michaela. And you'll notice there's some quite interesting discrepancies and differences between the two stories. There's a real gap in, in the framework. Uh, one of this has to do with the actual relationship between Peterson and the College of Psychologists. So the, the, the point of view of the college is this. Dr. Peterson has a, a license with the college. He promotes himself publicly as a clinical psychologist on his social media and in podcast interviews. So from their perspective, anytime he expresses an, an opinion that's, as they, as they put it, demeaning or degrading, he's representing the profession and he's representing the college itself. That's the college's perspective. Peterson's perspective is a little bit different. He says, yes, I, I'm licensed with the college. I'm, I'm a member of the college. But in my capacity as a clinical psychologist, that's actually something separate. Peterson actually sees that there's a, there's a division between his role as a licensed member of the college and his role, as he puts it, as a clinical psychologist in the broader public sphere. And uh, according to the Canadian Constitution Foundation, they quite unambiguously, or the lawyers who uh, I've read and listened to some of their commentary, they unambiguously come out on Jordan Peterson's side in this particular debate. They say that when he's speaking publicly on whatever political issue or cultural issue, he's doing this wearing his private hat, his hat as a private citizen and not specifically as a member of a college. I think that's actually really the crucial point here because there, there, there are broader implications of this case. And the broader implications are, is how is this going to affect other members of regulated professions in Canada? How, if, if this decision is not challenged, if this decision is not overturned, and I mentioned earlier that Peterson had lost this case in the Ontario Divisional Court, how is this going to affect other members of regulated profession? How is this going to affect doctors and nurses? How is this going to affect teachers, professors? How is this going to affect lawyers, et cetera? Does this mean that people who belong to a regulated body, a regulated college, are now going to have their free speech restricted, limited, or perhaps infringed upon? This, I think, is the, the central and crucial point in this case. Uh, one last thing that I want to talk about in terms of the legal background and legal context before I actually get to Dr. Peterson's specific statements is the question of, and this relates to the question of whether he's actually speaking as a clinical psychologist. When, he, when Dr. Peterson talks about issues like climate change or the freedom convoy, or the coronavirus, or things to do with politics, things to do with uh, the broader culture, free speech, postmodernism. There, I think it's very clear that he's not speaking as a clinical psychologist. There, he's very much speaking in his private capacity as an influential author, influential 
public figure on social media, et cetera. There is a bit of a problem, though, that sometimes Peterson does speak on topics that do fall under the broad pur purview of clinical psychology, particularly when it has to do with things like gender identity, trans issues, uh, gay issues. That th These are topics that have become particularly uh, incendiary in psych psychological circles, uh, cir circles to do with mental health and psychiatry. So there, I think that's a, a bit of a difficult area, but let's try to concretize this a little bit by getting into some of the specific comments. But before we do that, let me just very quickly check in with our producer, Daniel. Do we have any comments or super chats at this point? No super chat so far. No super chat so far? Okay, so I'd like to talk about some of the comments and here, First of all, if we consider this purely as a free speech issue, I think we can all agree that we're very much on Dr. Peterson's side. We, Whether or not we agree with all of the content of the, the comments that are under scrutiny here, I think we agree in principle that for his freedom to express his views on controversial and unpopular political subjects, and so some of these specific comments that he, he's made, I think we can agree with him, but there are other comments where we may disagree with either the content or the manner in which he's expressed himself. So first of all, oh, and there's actually one other point that I need to make, which is very, very important here. The complaints that were made to the College of Psychologists of Ontario, they were not made by actual clients or former clients of Dr. Peterson. That's very important. This is actually something that Peterson discusses at length in his podcast with Michaela. And what's particularly interesting is that if you read the decision that was released last week from the Ontario Divisional Court, this issue does not come up at all. And I think that's a very serious problem because this is, I think this is in many ways part of the core of Peterson's own argument in favor of his constitutional right to free speech. He's saying that a regulatory body, a regulatory college, like the College of Psychologists of Ontario, their primary job is to address concerns from clients of a particular individual within the profession that's being regulated. The problem here is that pretty much anybody can submit a complaint to the College of Psychologists. You don't even have to be a, client, a current client or a former client of Peterson. You can be any member of the public and not even just within Canada from anywhere in North America or indeed anywhere in the world. And so when, when the decision was released back in November by the college, the decision against Peterson, there was, there was a, a hundred page document where they enumerated all the various complaints that they'd received. And the point that Peterson makes is none of these complaints were actually from people that I'd worked with, the actual clients that I had counseled or, or helped. They were from people who were not clients, who were all over the world, who were lying about being clients or being former clients of Dr. Peterson. So there's an actual problem here with the actual content uh, of some of these complaints that were made to the college. Okay, so what is the actual nature of these complaints? Well, first of all, there was a, a complaint from uh, an individual living right here in British Columbia, uh, and the context is this. So this person had been complaining on social media, on Twitter, about the question of overpopulation. This, this gentleman was complaining that the world is overpopulated, and we need to do something about this. We need to take serious steps to address the question of overpopulation. And Jordan Peterson's response on Twitter was, you are free to leave at any time. Now, and so this person then complained and said, well, Dr. Peterson here is counseling suicide. He as a clinical psychologist is counseling suicide to this uh, anonymous person on social media. So here, I really have to unambiguously come out on, on Dr. Peterson's side. First of all, the whole idea of complaining about overpopulation or claiming that something has to be done about overpopulation is despicable. I think it's, it's a despicable point of view. And I'm tempted to say that anything that Dr. Peterson says in response to such an individual is perfectly justified. It's clear, And it's clear that his comment in this case, you are free to leave at any time, is somewhat ironic or sarcastic. And I think it's a perfectly appropriate, perfectly witty response in that specific context. I don't really think that one can justify saying here's a here's a clinical psychologist counseling an individual to commit suicide. That simply doesn't hold any water. 
Another series of complaints had to do with some comments that Jordan Peterson made on the Joe Rogan po podcast last year, including comments that he made about climate change, specifically the media's catastrophizing of the issue of climate change. And of course, I think we can all agree that we support Jordan Peterson on this. This is certainly an issue which does not fall under the purview of clinical, clinical psychology or any regulatory body whether it's in law, medicine, or whatever, to try to control, to try to control what a, a member can say on a political topic, whether it's climate change or coronavirus or whatever, I, I think that's simply unacceptable. So here, I think we can definitely support what Dr. Peterson is trying to say about climate change. A few more specific comments. Uh, one of the, so there were a couple of comments that were, that were the basis of complaints where Peterson was criticizing or attacking specific politicians in Canada, including complaints or criticisms of Prime Minister Trudeau himself, which I think is perfectly justified. I've, I've made some complaints and criticisms of Trudeau on this very show in previous episodes. Uh, that's certainly something which is very much a bedrock of any free society. There are certain situations, though, where Jordan Peterson has attacked Canadian politicians in ways that I, that I think are a little bit dubious. For example, there is a, a former secretary to J Justin Trudeau named Gerald Butts, whom Jordan Peterson on Twitter referred to as, quote, a prick. Now, here's my position on this. I think those of us who are promoting rational ideas, those of us who are promoting ideas of individualism, of political liberty, economic liberty, we need to hold ourselves up to very high standards in terms of how we conduct ourselves in public discourse and how we express ourselves. And I think it's possible to disagree with someone very strongly, very vociferously, without being abusive, using coarse or crude language. Uh, here, I think Jordan Peterson is somewhat overstepping the bounds of decency. Uh, to take another example, there's an Ontario city, city councillor named Catherine McKenney, who she's a, a person who uses they, them pronouns. And in on Twitter, Jordan Peterson referred to her as a self-righteous moralizing thing. Unfortunately, I was not able to find out, I did a little bit of digging and I wasn't able to find out exactly what context Peterson was responding to here, if he was responding to a specific policy or a specific belief or a specific tweet or comment by this particular individual. If he's simply attacking her for using they, them pronouns, I, I think that's, I, I do think that's inappropriate and I do think that's out of bounds. But again, there may be some sort of context. Unfortunately, the, the specific tweet that he was referred, that he was replying to, that has been de deleted. So I, I wasn't able to find out more information. Uh, also, there was a, a, a tweet that Jordan Peterson made in regard to Ellen, formerly Ellen, now Elliot Page, uh, uh, the actor, who has undergo, undergone a uh, transition from being a female to being a male. In this particular tweet, Jordan Peterson referred to Elliot Page by her previous name and by her previous pronoun. I, I'm not going to get into that. I, I have a lot of problems with that whole issue, but uh, he... he so he used her old name and her old pronoun, but specifically he referred to the surgeon who re removed her slash his breasts as a criminal, a criminal. Now, look, Elliot Page is in his 30s, her 30s, his 30s, however you want to put it. I think an individual who is in their 30s can have whatever medical procedure they want. That doesn't mean we necessarily have to approve of the decision or the philosophical or psychological premises underlying the decision, but a person who's in their 30s can have whatever medical procedure they want, and a, a surgeon should be free to do that. I, I don't think there's any criminality here. This is an important point precisely for the reason, and we've discussed this many times on this channel, we need to make a distinction between what kind of medical procedures or clinical procedures are appropriate for a minor and what kind of clinical procedures are appropriate to someone who's reached the age of majority and is able to make these kinds of rational decisions on their own. Obviously, we disagree with any kinds of chemical or medical or surgical interventions for minors. 
uh, for adolescents in, in terms of gender transitioning. That's, you know, we, we agree that that's monstrous. But once a person becomes an adult, they can do whatever they want. And I think it's none of Dr. Peterson's damn business what a, a 30 year old actor wants to do. But we, we need to make that distinction in order to be able to argue very, very clearly on this point. Okay, a few more points that I want to address. But first of all, uh, Daniel, any super chats or comments thus far? We have a super chat from Bonnie. She's asking, is College of Ontario the only way to be licensed? In the province of Ontario, yes. Actually, this is interesting. This is something that actually came up in Dr. Peterson's discussion with Michaela, his daughter. He said, okay, if I lose my license, which he hasn't yet, he's He's he has to undergo this SCRP, this uh, mandatory re-education at his own expense and to the college's satisfaction. If he doesn't do that, if he fails to do that, then he will lose his license in Ontario. But the point that Peterson made is if I lose my license in Ontario, I can get the exact same license in any other Canadian province within a, a couple of days. And so that, that was part of the argument that he was making to show just how preposterous this whole case is. Okay, just to, to mention a few more complaints, some of which we've already talked about on this show. Uh, there was an incident last year where Jordan Peterson tweeted something about a Sports Illustrated model where he says, sorry, not beautiful, and no, no amount of authoritarian tolerance can make it so. I don't approve of the idea of making public comments about somebody's appearance. Uh, to me, I think that's just out of bounds. Uh, there are a few other uh, comments that Peterson has made that we can discuss, but I want to take a step back. And so even though in many ways in this uh, in this program, I'm, I'm defending Dr. Peterson's right to say whatever he wants. I think there's a there's a serious problem here in, in the podcast that he did with Michaela. Peterson repeatedly said, you know, I've gone back over all these accusations. I've gone back over all these old tweets and comments that I made. And in my opinion, I haven't done anything wrong. For reasons that I've already touched on, namely that we in the promoting rational rational ideas and ideas about freedom. We have to hold ourselves up to the highest possible standards. But there's something else. If you go back, if you go back a couple of years to when Jordan Peterson first came to wide public attention, think for example of his famous interview with Kathy Newman. What was it that made Peterson so striking and so riveting in that particular interview? So if you think back to that interview, uh, they were talking about feminism, the, the, the gender ceiling and other things. And Kathy Newman was basically being a dingbat. She was throwing all these ideas at, at Peterson that he'd never said. What, what particularly struck me about his response was he was very calm and civil and polite. And I think that's really one of the qualities that has, that at the time catapulted him to public fame. But he, he's really an intellectual who is thoughtful, who doesn't shoot from the hip. And I think this is one of the reasons why he attracted such a huge following, particularly of young men, but not just young men, people from all walks of life, people from all backgrounds, and not even just in Canada, but in North America, all across in the United States and all across Europe. I find in recent years, Jordan Peterson has devolved to some extent. And I think this, this is going in lockstep with the general degradation and deterioration of discourse in our culture. People are becoming, public discourse is becoming more and more polarized and polarizing. There's more and more vitriol on all sides, the left, the right, the whatever. And I think, I think from Peterson's perspective, in order to, I think he thinks that in order to maintain his audience, uh, in order to continue to have the kind of influence that he's had, he has to adopt this sort of uh, blood and thunder, fire and brimstone approach to expressing himself. And I think that's a serious mistake. What, one specific respect in which I actually prefer Sam Harris, okay, well, two respects. The fact that uh, Sam Harris is, is an atheist is certainly a point in his favor. But if you listen to Sam Harris or watch him in interviews and podcasts, he always speaks in a very calm, measured way. I mean, he really talks like a scientist. He's very, very much in, 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 in control of his own emotions, what, whatever he's talking about. I think that's one of the reasons for his Im immense appeal and his immense influence. And I would like to see Peterson 
re recapture some of that. I'd like to see a little bit more of the Jordan Peterson from six years ago or five years ago. Uh, the Jordan Peterson of more recent times, and you'll see this in, in the podcast with Michaela, where he's, I don't want to say foaming at the mouth, but where he's raising his voice, using strong language, not coarse language, but using very strong language. It, it's a little too much. I think he's uh, trying a little bit too hard to keep up with the general direction that the culture is going in. No, we want cooler heads to prevail. We want more reasonable discourse. And so even though we may support some of the content of what Jordan Peterson is saying, I think we can take certain issues with the way he's actually saying it. So that's pretty much what I wanted to say today about this topic. Uh, let me just check in one last time with Daniel. Any super chats, comments, or indeed announcements about shows later on today? No more super chats, but in five minutes we have the reality show. Nicholas is actually also going to be on. The today's episode is titled "Are People Becoming More Selfish?" And then at 9 p.m. UK time we have HBTV with Harry Binswanger. It's going to be actually the last episode of HBTV. Uh, it will go on hiatus, so make sure to tune in. Uh, the name of the episode is "Philosophy Rules the World." Wow. Well, that's uh, certainly quite a grand finale. I'm looking forward to watching that. Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, thank you to all our, our supporters, uh, all our super chats for today. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you in five minutes on the reality show. Until then, I wish you all the best of premises. Thank you very much.